Good morning, everybody. We got a beautiful cloudy day, 75 degrees, nice little breeze blowing through. The crops are changing quick. I wouldn't be surprised in a few days. We're gonna be combining some soy meats. Look how brown those things are already. Ooh. So today we are going to be doing more preparation work to get ready for harvest because it is coming quick and it's probably gonna hit us with our pants down. So we're gonna try to be as proactive as possible. And when things are ready to go, we wanna be there right waiting at the front door. Pretty much got everything on this side of the farm ready. Other than that little cooling bin right there, we need to just kind of grease stuff. We need to give this motor a shot of grease, which the more that I'm looking now, I'm not even seeing a grease arc, so this might be a greaseless one. And then inside the bin, probably need to run around with a broom, kind of clean up some of this stuff that's falling off the walls. It appears that we have some pigeons hiding somewhere up there. Mm, where would that nest be? We should probably take care of those and then we need to make sure that the floor sumps close all the way because we don't want to have them halfway open and we fill it up and then we have a plug auger right from the get-go. This bin has a different door on it. You basically have to bolt everything into place so we need to put that back on. I honestly have no idea where all the bolts are. They might be over here. And then behind that white sheet is a hole where it got hit by a grain cart like 15 years ago. So we should probably hop up there with a caulking gun and see if we can seal that shut so that way it's not leaking water. Then that bin is ready to go. So we're going to be focusing on this half of the farm today. And we're going to start off by working primarily in this area where we laid all the new rock. We need, got everything laid. We need to get it back drug with the skid loader. Then we need to get it packed. I have two more loads of rock coming because we're going to add a little bit more to the end of the driveway over here. That way we have a little more room to turn the semis around in. It's kind of hard to tell, but this is just really bumpy right now. It's going to take me a couple hours to back drag and smooth this. So I will be back once I get it done. Two hours later. Huh? 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 That looks pretty good. As annoying and time consuming as back dragging and packing is, I have found that to be absolutely the most important thing when laying down rock because it sets the foundation for a smooth driveway. If we just lay the rock down and we drive on it, we get all kinds of mounds and bumps and you literally about get your teeth knocked out when you're driving a semi through it. This is all we have left of our rock pile. I haven't heard anything from the dump truck driver yet, so I don't know if he's coming today with a load or not. It just depends if he's hauling rock somewhere else. It might not happen today. But before those two loads of rock come, we need to figure out how we want to build this driveway bigger. I'm thinking I would like to come off the left side of the rock right here, and then we'll extend all the way out just about to the edge of the corn. I'm thinking probably about right here. Then we'll just bring the hairpin around over to where it connects over to the alfalfa field over there. I want to make this area of the driveway a lot bigger. So that way when the big Peterbilts come in, they have their really long turn radius. They can basically be facing straight when they hit the ramp because in the past they were turning around all the way up in here. And so when they turned, they would end up having their trailer drag down onto this ramp side and if it was a little icy a little slick they would actually end up getting hung up in there and then if they tried to make the corner wider they would actually end up over here where it's kind of half rock half mud and then they would end up getting stuck so my preliminary thinking is right now that's where the edge of the old driveway used to be we're going to be about 10 feet wider and then we're going to be going about another 20 feet past on the end we're going to lay that rock out we're going to see how it looks if it needs to be a little bit bigger, I might do another 10 feet wider. Driveways are kind of like machine sheds. You can never build one big enough. So if we have more space than we need, that's okay. Cause we will find a place to utilize it. And I'm telling you this, I have a 75 foot wide driveway in the front yard. It does not matter how wide you make it. People will still drive off into the grass. Hold on, let me count. Uno, dos, tres. 2, 54, 55. Okay, I was 20 feet off. Now with this last pile of rock, it's kind of not really enough to even get started over there. So I think what I'm gonna do is end up making a platform for the old dryer shack, that little building right there. So when we're loading up beans, we can actually have it over here. We can kind of get out of the wind during the winter time. I don't really have a very good spot for it because by the door, it's gonna be on the edge of the driveway, which I don't want it to get clipped by a vehicle. If it's in here, it's gonna block all view of the door. So when we have the sweep going and stuff, you're not gonna be able to look out and actually see the driver. It's going to have to go on this side of the auger, which I'm not the biggest fan in the world of, 
But I was thinking about this. If semis pull in facing that way, they're gonna be back here opening their tarp anyway. And then they can just walk right over here into the shed. We can still reach everything to turn stuff on from here without having to step over anything. We can open stuff from here. So really, this is not the end of the world at all. We got a pretty good slope coming down, so I need to get my greater eye on. We're going to build this out probably three, four, maybe five feet. We'll gradually taper it off, and then we'll make it flat going just about to where that electrical line's coming up out. I think we'll end up setting that thing right in here. I might even turn it just a little bit at an angle. Put in too much rock at first, but I think we pretty much got our laser leveled out now. I'm gonna try setting the shack on there first, and then we'll see what it looks like, and then we can kind of address the edge, make that definitely more gradual. Don't need anybody tripping on that. Look at that. I think that looks pretty good. Ugh. Kind of give us a little bit of an outline. I'm gonna hook up the bush mower on the skid loader and then we can mow it. Then we can kind of get a better visual and I guess it needs to be mowed anyway. It always amazes me how dirty these connectors get so quickly. Ugh. I somehow found grease on my shirt. Now we have a greasy hand. I still haven't heard anything from the rock guy so I... I don't know if we're gonna be getting any loads today. I guess we got one more thing we can do just off of the ramp going down. We used to have a rock pile sitting here that we were taking from to spread all the rock out over here. And if you're not careful when you remove the pile, you have a spot where it's a lot deeper than everywhere else you've been spreading. And that is definitely the case right here. We probably got 10 inches of extra rock just about down to the forks. So we're gonna try to come through, level this off, see if we can smooth it out a little bit. And then going up the ramp, I don't know how well this picks it up, but there's kind of a big hump right here because I think that's also the same case there. So I'm gonna take the skid loader. We're gonna knock that little lip off. That way it's gonna be a little easier for trucks to get up the ramp, especially when it's snowy, slick, and icy. They don't hit this little wedge and then end up spinning out on it. And then we'll also just make it smoother right here because this is now going to be the center of the driveway instead of the edge. So really would rather not have a big old bump in the middle of it. Oh, that looks good. That looks better, but I still got a bit of a high area here. I thought I fixed it. I should have got out. It was a little hard to tell from the skid loader seat. I'm gonna have to level this back out again, but the good news is I already got it loose, so I really did not add very much rock in here at all, so more of a time waste than anything. I got this part off the ramp looking good, but down there, I leveled it off, and then I kind of rebuilt it back, but I rebuilt it back the way it was right before I leveled it off. I should have got out and looked at it. It was a little deceptive from the seat. Normally, you can tell pretty good, but on this case, it kind of deceived me. Ah, oh, man, I'm gonna have to level that back out. It's gonna need a lot shaved off. It's basically gonna have to be down here. They were probably 10 inches high still. Hello, skid loader, my old friend. Come to push more rock with you again. Yeah. There we go. That looks a lot, lot, lot better now. We got the clean rock off on the side, then we got the stuff that's kind of mixed with a little bit of dirt, which we'll just put that over here on the spot where we have absolutely no rock underneath. Then we can just reuse this to cap that area. I would like my next two loads of rock to come, but it's, I shouldn't say yet. Quarry closes in an hour, so I haven't heard anything. I'm not planning on it. Yeah, I'm glad I did that. That looks so much better. Yeah. 
Now I guess it's just a waiting game for the rock, so in the meantime, we're gonna see if we can get these bins ready to be filled with soybeans. Hmm, caulking gun, I'm caulking gun. Where art thou? Ah, uh, here we are. What one do we want? Probably find a tube of caulking first. Logan, you gotta get out of there and get those beans. They're been ready for a month now. Really? <laughs> I need a tube of cock. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I don't need to do any cocking. That hole in that sheet, and that hole in that sheet, plus that hole that's kind of patched on that sheet. Echo! They're getting replaced. It sounds like we have a neighbor a mile and a half down the road. He has three bench sheets that fit that exact bend that he is not using anymore. I didn't realize this, but our friend Zach left his telehandler here, so that way he could use that to lift himself up to replace those sheets for us. So I'm not gonna worry about putting the door on right now, because if Zach's gonna be in and out of this bend, I might as well not mess with it, but I can get this swept, I can get everything greased on this sweep, I can get everything greased on this auger, which I don't think there is a grease circ out here, so everything, wait, wait, wait a second. Got a grease circ right there. Oh yeah. Fresh air. Ooh, I'm not really liking the looks of those belts. How'd you get in here? Come on guys, get out. Hasta luego. We're gonna be getting the old Red Rider out here in a little bit. If you guys don't leave, and I don't think you're gonna like that. I cranked the crank all the way shut. This door here, shut. Middle door, shut. Inside door, shut. But the very center one, I have a gap where I can fit my fingers inside of there, so I don't know what needs to be adjusted there. If Zach's going to be putting those sheets in this bin, I'm just going to have him look at it because he understands how that works a lot better than me, and he's a lot faster at it, so we're just going to be more efficient. So this bin is done for us. That one's greaseless. Next up. Why do we say echo when we go into an echoey area? Why don't we say something like, water buffalo! Pro tip with your sweep, make sure you have it on the right side of the stop before you fill the bend, because if you have it on the wrong side of the stop, when you go to turn it on later, you're gonna hit the stop and it's not gonna be able to go. And then you're gonna have to try to come in here and take this pin out when you got about this much soybeans over the top of it. I think the very first year we got a sweep, we did that. <laughs> so we learned. Another professional tip, when you get out of a bend and it's empty, always shut these inside actual doors. This one is just more or less a cover. There's been several people who have died from not shutting these inside doors, just having the outside ones. Then they ended up filling the bend and they were walking by the door. And then this just little thin thing gave out. Grain came flooding out, knocked them over, trapped them underneath of it, and they suffocated. So we always just get in the habit whenever we get out of the bend, so we shut those. To keep things straight, we did all the bottom ones first on that bin. Now we're doing all the bottom ones on this bin. Then we'll go the insides of the bins. We'll do the conveyors, get everything down low. Then we'll just kind of work our way up in order. I don't like going up there. Oh boy. Uh, how am I supposed to see that one? Ooh. Here we go. If you are a little queasy when it comes to heights, uh, this may not be the spot for you. Yes, we did pick the windiest day of the year to come up here. Not like coming up here. You just don't want to step that way. You don't want to step that way either. Or fall forward. There's a entire bird's nest down there. Grease, grease, grease! 
greased, 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 greased. I think we're done greasing. Well, I was up top, I noticed that the door must be open. I thought my wrench fell out. But the door must be open on top of the bin. I don't know if I got shut right or if the wind blew it open. Okay, we got that one shut. Oh. <laughs> what does it look like in here? Ooh. That's dusty. I don't like that. Probably get a new handle there, fix that, straighten it out, something. I don't like this like this because you're basically supposed to wedge a bar in here to lift it up every time you want to end up actually closing this door. And that's just way more hassle than this needs to be. This should just be a you close it normal and it, it should work. So let's just fix it. Cause this is just the trap waiting to happen. Especially if we're in the middle of harvest is getting up close to the door and then it actually does break or drops down. Cause these pins are not lining up with those. So you have to basically pry something in here to get it up high enough. I mean, it's just a matter of time before this bends enough where you can't get it down. And then I have to take that out and pull it out and That'll take an hour. I know an hour doesn't seem like a lot, but during the middle of harvest, it's enough to shut everybody down for an hour. You could have got 15 acres done. And if rain's coming, that could be significant. Well, we got our grease gun out here. We're gonna get this 13-inch Westfield auger all greased up. This is what's going to unload the semis for beans. So it's gonna go in the 32,000 bushel bin, the 10,000 bushel bin, plus the two 10,000s over at Kristen and Rusty's. Then we have the drive over, which is what's going to dump into this particular spot. So we're gonna get this greased up too. And while we're at it, we might as well do the backhoe belt conveyor and the 10 inch Westfield auger on the other side of that. We'll use those to unload the bends so we won't be using them for a while, but while we're at it, I'd rather grease when it's 75 degrees out than when it is 20. Ugh. That greaser is broken off. I need a bar to do that one. I don't even know if we're gonna use this auger this year or not. It looks fairly greasy in there yet. Okay, this one should be ready to go now. literally impossible unless you take this off okay we're gonna try to get all this stuff cleaned out some of it's pretty hard in there i ended up bringing a few heavy duty tools we'll try to go in with the pry bar and to scrape some of that up oh yeah there's some nice chunks in there Ooh, we'll get this cleaned out don't need that just sitting in there if that gets wet at all It'll start to rot and then eventually this will rust. We don't need to prematurely do that. This is a point I didn't realize was even a problem. So I'm just going forward now. We'll just make sure we have this clean when we get the bins empty. We are always learning new maintenance stuff. It's just like when you've greased something for 10 years and then you crawl under something and you reach in a certain spot and you're like, oh, I didn't know there was a grease cirque there. Got a little bit of rain last night. Looks like maybe a little bit more coming in. We got a new tool to try to get in there a little bit better today. And now that we have some light, I just noticed this. We have a bolt. Mm, that's good enough for who it's for. That might help keep water out a little bit. We don't have a lip on the top and that was on top before so water got in there. Maybe that kind of got in a little bit. The other one's the other way. So I guess we're gonna know when we go over there if that corn's all dry on the inside then maybe that's why we got a little bit of rotten material in here. Take a look and see what we're working with. Oh, there's a mouse in there. Eh, there's a little bit in there. Not as mm, maybe similar. Interesting. Another factor could be if the wind's really whipping during the winter time and stuff, it's very possible that some stuff's blowing up inside of there because it's just a direct channel. 
Oh, I probably should clean that out too. We're definitely gonna be putting this cover on with this lip on the top side on both of them. I think that made a difference. This one did not have any hot, smelly, rotten corn in it at all. It was just dried and kind of stuck to the bottom a little bit. But it looks a lot better. Thunder's grumbling. The next little bit of prep that we need to do, we gotta pull this pit cover off. We're gonna have to pull one of the grates off. I'm gonna get a ladder, climb down below. Had a couple rocks sneak past the end of this pit cover here, and we don't wanna pull those up into the auger because it could stop the auger, which would burn the belts off, and then we'd have to get down there and get it out anyway. And that would be when it would be full of corn, which would make it even worse because then we would have to grain back it out. So we're gonna go in ahead of time, clean it out. Once we get everything cleaned out, we'll get the top put back on. We'll fire everything up, make sure everything's running. And then if there's any crud still in these augers or in the bottom of the pit, that's gonna get ran up into the bends. And then we'll be able to clean out the bends to get that out of there if there is anything. And then we'll be done. I take that back. I need to go get an impact, pull this cover off. I believe there's a grease zerk on a hanger bearing inside of there. And then we also need to pull this cover off. And then there is a motor down there that also needs to be greased. Before we end up climbing down in there and sticking our fingers around the bottom of that auger, we're gonna go inside the dryer shack. We're gonna pull all the fuses and everything just to make sure everything is completely shut off and nothing can accidentally turn on. Because we lose a finger, a foot, an arm, a leg, a life, and a quick amount of time down there. These are all of our fuses, so they all appear to be out. Okay, we're good. feeling we are going to be down here for a little while. Basically from here over is where stuff was able to sneak by because the cover is not big enough to do the whole thing. So when the truckers ended up coming through this last winter slash spring and they had mud and rocks in their tires, some of them just fell in just in the little slots right on the side, enough to get down in here. So, you know, 200 trucks worth of mud falling off into those gaps. There's just enough little rocks like this that We'll probably be okay with these little ones just dry running right now. It'll get it up at least into the bin. I'll be able to clean it out over there. But there's some bigger three inch ones down there where they're more encased in mud. So we're gonna have more fun down there. We're starting on the easy part in this case. <laughs> there's that toad. Well, that thing give me warts if I grab it. I've always been told that. I don't know if it's true. I know they try to pee on you. I don't really want to kill the guy. We got done just in time. Cooper got that semi done, that semi done, and then we got, there, there's another semi heading back there. All the semis are done. We're gonna hook up the grain cart now. This is gonna look so cool. We got those W1400s on the back of the 340, and then on the grain cart, we got 1250, so they're just a little bit narrower. With fat tire gang. Let's see what we got for our first look here. Goodness. Look at those tires. <laughs> that thing is all tired. It just floats on water. We've been trying to do a better job of delegating off different tasks to different people. So like right now, Dad and Cooper have been working on these semis. They have the combine in right now. They're changing fluids and stuff on that, making sure that is 100% ready to go and getting the grain cart and stuff ready. Well, I've been doing the stuff over here on the bend side, getting things fixed in the driveway. Just that way we're not having one guy just kind of standing around twiddling their thumbs when you get on the little in-between things or when you have a two-guy job and the other guy's just standing there. Because most of that semi stuff, two-guy job. And most of the combine stuff, kind of one guy job and then my cooper can be working on the grain cart so we're just trying to figure out how to kind of work as a team work into each other's strong suits i don't really like working on semis at all i i will do it i know how to do it but it doesn't really get me all fired up and excited where like 
running the numbers on the farm. I like doing that. I like planning that stuff. I like learning about the agronomy side of it, but then like that doesn't get Cooper fired up as much. So we definitely try to go into our strong suits where we can. And that makes the most sense because then it makes us best in the areas we're best at. All right, we are going to try firing up that auger in the bottom. We'll fire up that one coming out. We'll fire up the leg and then we'll run everything up through there. That way if there's any crud in there, if there's any crud in the leg still, any crud in there, which we know there's a little bit that's gonna go up through, but it's gonna drop down into this first bend. We need to clean the floor with the leaf blower anyway. So let's see if this works. There's really no way around it. Having a pit in the ground, you're gonna get just a, a little bit of water and kind of gunk in there. And after your first load, you're good to go, but it happens. I'm not sure what is what here. <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff to turn on. We're gonna go to the manual screen. On this main screen, this is the automated setup. So basically if we hit start, then everything will turn on in sequence. And then once it senses no load on the motors anymore, then it will shut everything off in sequence as well. But I don't want to do that right now because I don't want to turn everything on. We just want to turn individual things on. So we're going to clear the faults. Okay, now we're going to start with doing the unloads on top of the bends first. Not the unloads, the fill conveyors. And then we'll do the leg. We'll make sure everything is spinning out there right on that. And then once we do that, we'll get this black auger and then we'll do the pit last. So that conveyor going from the center of this bend to that bend right there on that catwalk, that is what's running right now. We're gonna fire this one up next. We're gonna go bend one fill conveyor. Mm, I don't hear that one moving. See, this is why we don't turn everything on right away. We turn them on individually because like here, when something doesn't turn on, then you're not plugging things up. Kind of wondering if that one is for that conveyor. I think that one might be the one we need, but I have a hypothesis. See how we have two little red lights on right there? Check this out. Once we turn it on, bend one fill conveyor, then we go back in there and now we got two bright sets of lights. I wonder if we have some burned out fuses. I think I just found my problem. These are a 12 amp fuse. Now why these are 12s? I thought these were all the same, it's literally. Okay, that's a 20. I need to do a better job of checking, I guess, because this one's a 30. I found some 30s right here, and I put in 12. So I probably just fired these guys off, which I guess better to put a smaller one in than put a big one into a small one, then you blow up something up in the wiring or something, or the motor. That's good to know, though. I, I didn't realize we had ones that small in there. Why do they make them the exact same size and the same color? That just kind of sets a guy up for a trap. Look at that. Same color. Let's try this again. That explains why when I shot that the first time I saw sparks in there. So I probably blew them right from the get-go. Hey, I hear something moving this time. Yep, it's turning. These things right here adjust where the legs go to. So it can either go to that bin, it can go to the conveyor up there, or it can go to the overhead. It appears like all my writings have gotten wore off. Oh boy, I don't know what goes to what. I can't get this one to budge right now for whatever reason, so I'm hoping it's where it needs to be. If not, it's gotta be up to this one because when I turn it a little bit, if I look right here, I can see we got some writing. It looks like something about the 18,000 bushel bend, which is that one. So pretty confident we're not over on that one. So we're gonna run that. We're gonna run this. I'm gonna open up the bottom here. That way, if there's some crap, it'll just fall right out. We'll be able to pick it up on those mats. Otherwise, it'll go the way it's supposed to. Before I get too crazy, I think I'm just gonna put this back on. That way I can take the pit covers. I can lay everything back over. So that way, if there is some crap that comes down in this, we're not just re-dumping it back down in there. Sometimes this is easier said than done though. Yeah, we're gonna, I wanted to leave it open in case there was a rock or something that ended up getting wedged down in there. I got it clean. We're going with my skills here. <laughs> How about this? Better yet, we're just gonna put the bucket right underneath the spout of that and then that way we don't have to pick up any mess. If there's anything, we can just go dump it on the compost pile right away. It's safe to say, I think our brain is starting to rewire itself to where we're making better decisions. <laughs>
Why doesn't stuff just work? There shouldn't be anything in there. Shouldn't be. Yes, good call with the skid loader bucket. And two fill conveyor. Been one fill conveyor. We need west leg. Okay, see so everything spinning out there. It appears like it is. Good, good, good. I'm just being gentle with everything and we're just turning everything on slow, letting it run for a couple minutes and we'll turn another thing on, let it run for a couple minutes. That way if there's a chunk of something where it's not supposed to be, we're just not causing any problems. Or if we do have an issue somewhere, we're minimizing where or what it's affecting. We got everything down below working. All the, everything went through. I must've got all the rocks out because we didn't have any problems. This is working. The leg is working. The conveyor going to the overhead is working just fine. I was able to get everything up there working okay. The only thing I could not get to turn on is coming from this hopper bottom bin, this auger right here. For whatever reason, I have the boxes on. I have all the fuses in. On the inside, I thought that was one right there, but it's not. I called dad, he doesn't know, so that's the only one we gotta figure out how to get going yet. I don't really wanna clean out the inside of that bin yet until we get that other auger going because if there's a little crud in that, that's gonna end up in that bin too, so I don't wanna clean the floor and then throw a new crud on it and then have to clean it twice. So dad's supposed to come out in the morning, see if he can help me get that going. In the meantime, I got two new loads of rock we're gonna try to finish this driveway. Try, and hopefully we don't need one more load of rock. I know this looks all super confusing, which I'm not gonna lie, it is, but we ended up finding out we got these three wires here that have wire nuts on the end and they have 283 written on top of them. When we press the button on this screen, we feel the contactor down here, which the wires up there run through these down here. We feel the one that says 283 click. So that is the one that is on and this is the one that is not hooked up. So we're gonna put it into this one right behind it, which is running on an auger where these will never run at the same time. So we don't have to worry about blowing the fuse. We'll probably end up taking these out just so we foolproof it for down the road because really we need another one of these blocks for these particular wires. But for right now to turn it on, we're gonna loosen these three screws. We're gonna put these in and hopefully this works. Hey. Yes, we got it to work. Good. Here, I'm gonna turn the top of that bin on quick. Bin one fill conveyor. See, that one's nice and quiet. You hardly even hear it. You know what? Same with the west leg. What's up? Can you help me moisture test some corn? Yeah. Or is it easy? The though? pro's over there. Your dad? Yeah. All right, then he can help me. What do you got? There's three ears. Hey, what the heck is that thing? This is cheating. Why? That's cool though. I've never seen. I've one never of seen one of those. Really? No. Yeah. You tell. I've never understood how those work. I know it. Maybe twenty-two and a half, roughly. Then you figure you probably better add. What a point and a half for the combine. Went to the second spot and press these field. The first one was 22%. We figure add about a point and a half for a, the combine to actually come through a more accurate representation of the average moisture of the field. Then we went to a different spot. That one was like 30 and a half percent with the hand shell. So a little bit wet for Presley to combine yet. Yeah, I'm gonna try to hop down here into this hole, see if we can get that all greased up down there. Dad opened it up. I guess there was some moisture in there. So we're just gonna leave this open for a bit, let it evaporate out, get all that junk out of there. That's a little bit of a silly spot for a greaser. What are you supposed to push that against? <laughs> Do you win? Done. Here we go.
this last winter or early spring when we were in here cleaning this bin out, we had the thing completely spotless, but we used this bin last year to blow cor air, not corn, air through the floor to cool the corn because we put dried corn in this bin and we had enough of it just stick to the bolts and stuff that were on the side all the way up the wall, all the way around the bin. And so over the summertime with the heat and the wind and just the little vibrations of the bin and stuff, all that stuff fell on the ground. I probably got a good half a skid loader bucket. So it's amazing just the little stuff that sticks to the walls, how much that adds up. It's right there. It's just little stuff like that. We got a little bigger patch right there and there's even bigger patch right here. But this stuff will eventually fall off. I mean, it's dry. It's just somehow sticking to the side. Now, the very last thing we need to do inside of this bin, we have our AGI SureTrack cables hanging down. There's seven of them all the way around the bin. Then we have one right there in the center. We need to tie them down to the floor with the string that we have right here. These cables are a moisture sensor and a... Oh, I'm getting a weird echo right here. But they also measure temperature. And so they touch the floor of the grain bin and then they go all the way up to the peak. So it actually sends information to my phone and then I can see 3D imaging of what the inside of the grain bin looks like, whether I wanna look at the moisture or I wanna look at the temperature. And then I can also track change over time. So if we're getting a hot spot in a specific spot of the bin, it will actually tell me and then the bin fans will automatically kick on to cool it off. So pretty cool technology. And this is really important for us because if we get a hot spot in the middle of a big bin like this that can cause a lot of problems found this piece of string line in the dryer shack i don't know if this is what this was used for it looks like the same string so we're going for it and just cut a little piece off and tie it on both ends how about that usually you don't get a breeze from this side of the bend so this is kind of a nice tree something satisfying about a square knot look how pretty that is Ooh. West Bend is clean, East Bend is clean, everything is clean. Everything's greased while I was inside the bins cleaning those things out. Dad and Cooper got everything fired up on the dryer side of stuff, so it shut off the first time they turned it on for whatever reason, fired it up again. Now it works. And I just realized I have two greasers right up top there that I forgot to get. <laughs> Grease zerk, grease zerk. Is it a K or a T? I'm going with a K, Grease Zerk. The driveway. I did not get it done last night. We're gonna try to get it done tonight. I can't believe it, driveway's done. Speaking of done, I'm done for the night. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.